Good morning, Neo Church. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Hunter. We are super excited that you are here to spend your Sunday morning with us. Uh, We have a couple quick things to go through, though, before we hop into the worship and teaching and all that good stuff that we have planned for today. Uh, So first things first, if you are new and you've been coming for a few weeks, a few months, uh, maybe even a year and you've never filled out a Connect card, uh, we would love to get to know who you are and help you get connected here at Neo. Uh, So there's a QR code all throughout the building. It's in the seat back chair in front of you. Um, It's on the screen right now. If you scan that and hit the button that says connect, we would love to get to know who you are and help you get connected here at Neo. Uh, We have groups that meet all throughout the week, small groups, men and women's groups. We have a youth group that meets on Sunday night. There's lots of ways to get connected here. Um, And so we would love to help you with that this week. Uh, Also on that QR code, you can give online. It is super quick and easy to give online. Um, It's an easy way to do it, but if you do prefer to give in person, um, there's little boxes all throughout the building on the wall. They look just like this. If you want to drop an in-person gift, that's the best way to do that while you are here today as well. Um, There's a lot of things that go on throughout the weeks and months here at NEO, but different events for different groups, all that good stuff. Um, So if you want to know about what we have coming up, hit that QR code as well. It definitely will let you know all the stuff that is coming up in the next few weeks and months here. Um, The last thing, if you have a baby all the way to a sixth grader, get them dropped off down at Neo Kids or Switch, which is back this way. Um, We would love to hang out with them this morning and teach them God's word at their level. So make sure you get them dropped off um, and so you can enjoy the service. So um, it's about to begin in just a few seconds. So if you're getting coffee, if you're talking to somebody, begin to wrap that up because you do not want to miss what we have planned for this morning. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. God bless. Peace.
of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior in all their distresses. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. And so today, Jesus, we look to you. We remember your faithfulness. We remember your goodness, Lord. And though all around us the war may rage and the battle may still go on, we know that you are the victor. That you have won the ultimate victory, Jesus. And so we claim that today. Over every worry, every fear, over whatever happens in the world, Jesus, you are Lord and Savior. You're faithful to those who are yours, and you have called us your own. And we thank you for that today, Jesus. So give us fresh eyes today, we pray. All this in your name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's sing this new song.
control the storm So we still And it's in He will again And if he told the sea When to split And it's in He will again And if he told the walls When to fall And it's in He will again And if he told the chains When to play And they did He will again And if he told the
creation groans for you. Lord, as the day draws near, Lord, would you draw us closer to yourself as our shepherd, as our provider, as our king and our keeper, Lord. We look for you, and we just pray today, Lord, that you would help us be a bride that's spotless and ready for you, Jesus. We're coming soon. Let us be a people who are ready for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. How's everybody doing today? Is everybody good? Everybody good? Yeah, that's amazing. I like that. Um, thank you so much for coming and uh, just being here this morning. Uh, hopefully you got your eclipse glasses ready to go for tomorrow. Uh, may nobody burn their eyeballs or any issues. Hopefully we'll pray for that, of course. Uh, it's nice to see the sun shining today. Hopefully it'll shine tomorrow for us. Um, last, It's hard coming off last week, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, last week was, uh, man, what a... Incredible week. Uh, thank you so much for investing, inviting those in your life. Thank you so much for just, uh, man, getting your family to come, uh, trusting us. Um, I know how it is. You invite someone to something and you're just kind of like, oh, man, I hope they don't screw up, right? I hope it goes well. I hope there's parking. I hope there's everything. And uh, it was just uh, God just did a lot of just it was our largest Sunday we've ever had, um, which was incredible. We don't really stress the numbers a ton, but when God really brings a ton of people out, uh, you can't help but get a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit teary-eyed when you leave and get done. And we saw some salvations last week as well. Um, so it was just all around, all around. Uh, people heard the gospel, right? Praise God. Praise God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so that does take us into a couple things I have to tell you about. Uh, next month, we are doing baptisms. Um, if if we have one or two, that's okay, right? We already have a few signed up. Uh, but what we realized last fall is we can't wait a year because we had way too many in the fall, so, which is awesome, right? That's incredible. So we have to like do a few more. So that's, that's fine. That's okay. So we're doing uh, another baptism next month. So I encourage you uh, um, to, man, if the Lord is leading, if you start a relationship with Christ uh, this last weekend, uh, the next step is baptism. The next step is we, we see in Scripture we are to be obedient unto Christ. If we really truly believe that he died for us and we put our trust in him, then we say, okay, Lord, what would you have me to do? And baptism is a next step. It does not save you, but it tells the world of who, whose you are, right? That's, that's why we get baptized. It's to proclaim Jesus Christ. So uh, next month is baptism. Can't wait. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. There are technically six spots left for the men's retreat. We're trying to get this up to 70 guys. I think we can do it, guys. I think we can do it, right? So we extended the registration a little bit. So um, wives, you can sign your husband up. If you need to get rid of him for the weekend, like, <laughs> like it would be nice if he uh, went out of the house for a little bit. Yeah, sign him up. He, you know, what, what's he going to do? What's he going to say? What's he gonna, is he going to like push back and say, no, I'm not going. Um, sign him up. Let's do it. Get him out there. Get him going. Um, so obviously the, stu the students have a, a little t-shirt sale out in the uh, old foyer or the old auditorium, but we're calling it the foyer now, all right? So in the foyer, that's, uh, they have a little t-shirt sale, and that's to help get students to camp. Uh, transportation costs, we're trying not to uh, bump up the cost for the students, so we try to help them out with that. So it's a good little, uh, it's a good little t-shirt. It's thick. It's a nice t-shirt. It's good. Um, so, all right. We are in a new series, and uh, the series is, I'm excited about this series, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's something that's very important. It's something after Easter that we look at and we go, okay, you know what, <laughs> Easter time people come out, man, they come out. I mean, we had a ton of people here last week, they come out, um, and I guarantee you probably 90, 95, maybe better of the people that came out last week would probably say they were Christians. Most likely they would probably say they were Christians. And so just, you know, with the Easter series that we did and God just kind of put it on my heart, like, man, like, what truly makes a, a person a believer in Christ? What truly makes somebody a Christian? Because there's a lot of people, once again, that claim to be a Christian, but does that mean that, you know, everyone that claims to be a Christian is a Christian? And, and what, are we, what are we selling? You know, what are we selling to the average person? 
you know, the church in America, the church around the world, like, how do you get to become a Christian? And does that truly mean that you're a Christian? And so we have to really kind of dive into this a little bit to try to understand this. And so a little bit more of a teaching series, all right, um, as opposed to a yell and scream at you series, but I'm sure you're okay with that. You kind of relax a little, okay, just relax. Um, but let me ask you a question. Let's see here. Um, who has ever been a, uh, who has ever worked in a restaurant? Let's see it. Who's ever worked in a restaurant? You cooked, maybe you were a waiter or waitress. That's a good amount. That's not bad. We could really make some good food probably later if we really wanted to. Um, that's not bad at all. Um, I was actually a, uh, I, I waited tables for seven, about, about six, seven months. Can you imagine me coming up to your table? That would be, uh, I don't know if you want that. I'll be honest with you. There's a reason why I only lasted six or seven months. I'll be straight up honest with you. I found a better job. And uh, yeah, it was, um, I was all about, um, let's see here, quantity, not necessarily quality, all right? It was like, let's get people through. If they're mad at me, you know what? Let's just get them out the door, all right? They're, gonna, they're not going to give me a tip anyway, so let's get them moving, right? All about quantity. Let's get it rolling. Um, but my time there was interesting because you would, you would, you would like, see all of a sudden something take place. You would see these conversations happen and certain people got chosen, right? Certain people got chosen to have somebody follow them around. Um, it was like this trainer trainee relationship that would take place. And so the server would come to the table and sure enough, about five or six feet behind the server, there would be another person just soaking it all up, right? <laughs> Learning, understanding, seeing how this goes, right? I was never chosen for that for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, but, you know, what would happen though, of course, that, that server would go back and that person would learn, okay, you know what? I have to treat the people in the back with respect because if I don't treat them with respect, and I don't treat them the way that I need to treat them, then, you know, my food will never come up or will come up late. And then, you know, I have trouble and I have to make sure that I, I talk with the host or the hostess properly because, you know, then they'll give me better tables or they'll give me more seat. They'll, they'll, they'll make my world a little bit better. And so sure enough, these, you know, the managers, the people that own the restaurant said, these are the ones that I want to make sure are training everybody else, follow them around. They're following them around to what, of course, learn how to do what they do. Um, what if I were to say, this is a little bit strange, but what if I were to say this is the model, this is the way that God really chose to make sure that a person could put the stamp on themselves and say that they were a Christian? Of course, it comes down to a moment in time in your life, and we say this all the time because we don't want anybody to get screwed up on this. We don't want anybody to get mixed up on this. It comes down to a moment in time in your life where you really look up into the heavens and say, I want you as my Lord and Savior. And that's truly what gets you to heaven. But then what? Then what? Can you imagine, can you imagine your work, wherever you work right now, whether you're a teacher? Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine if a teacher was not trained? Could you imagine a kindergarten teacher going for the very first? Can you imagine a junior high teacher going in? Oh, my goodness. That would be a disaster. I'll be honest with you. Like classroom control is so, it's such a big thing. And if a teacher goes in and loses that classroom on day one, oh, that would be bad. Imagine in your work, imagine if there was no training. They hired somebody and just threw them in and said, you know what, figure it out. That would be an absolute mess, right? How many of your companies would fail, fall apart, go crazy? Like how many sales would be lost tomorrow if this was the case? You just started hiring people and throwing them in and no training, no training, no training. Just go, just do it, just jump in that would be a mess, that would be a disaster. But the Christian world, what do we do? We hire people, okay, we don't hire people, but they get saved, right? They, get, they, they start a relationship with Jesus Christ, they jump into this organization, this thing called the church, and what do we do so many times? It's, okay, you're good, no training needed, right? You're in, you don't need any training, good to go. Just go out into the world and make a difference. And this is why we see people that, that start building relationships with others and there's not been proper training, there's not been proper education, there hasn't been proper like depth and understanding of God's word and all of a sudden what? They're teaching things that should not be taught. They're leading people in a way that they should not be led. Why? Because they were never led in the proper way to begin with. This is the problem. You know, when you look at Christianity, when you look at Christianity, all right, there's a number of reasons why people say I'm a Christian. Sometimes it's just simply because what? They took communion when they were in seventh grade. 
I did my first communion, right? And this is how a lot of us grew up. I did my first communion, so therefore, I, 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 what religion are you? Well, I'm, I guess I'm a Christian. You know, I went through that. I did catechism. You know what? I did this class, and you know what? At the end of it, I, that's just, I'm a Christian. This is what I do. You know, I, I, I went to church last Sunday. I, I must be a Christian, right? <laughs> like, I must be. I go a couple times here and there. This is kind of just what I do. And I mean, there's all these things that we can just kind of like say, you know what? I kind of go through, through these ritualistic things that, that people say are important, so therefore I must be this. I must be a Christian because I went through this, and you know what? The cross means you know, something to me because I see it all the time, and you know, I wear a cross, so therefore I must be a Christian. There's got to be something more to this. You know, we look in Scripture, and we see, we see Jesus, and uh, we see him training and uh, spending a lot of time with people, and we see, of course, the 12 disciples. We see the 12, and we see him spending a lot of time with this 12 group of guys. But we see more than that. At one point, we see 70. There's 70. And he sends them out two by two. So groups of 30. He sends out a group of 35 people, like uh, 35 groups of two. And so there's like this group of 70. And then later, we see another massive group as well. And so we see that there's this system, there's something going on within the scriptures. We see that Jesus is not just kind of like talking to people and making sure that they start a relationship with Jesus and then walking away and being done. We don't see that. If you look in, if you look in scripture, it's kind of wild because you see the word Christian is only used three times. And Jesus Christ has never used the word Christian ever. Um, it wasn't really a given yet. It was kind of this, you know, um, for, it was this name given in the time of Paul, right? It's like, oh, you're a Christ follower. You must be, of course, what? A Christian. But it's interesting, the word disciple. The word disciple we see over 260 times in Scripture. We see Jesus over and over and over talking about being my disciple. There has to be something to this. And so we have to look at this. And so we kind of see Jesus getting all of his disciples together. He has this massive group of people. And this is in Luke chapter 6. If you have a copy of God's Word, I encourage you to open it up. Um, it'll, like I said, it'll come up on the screen. Um, Luke chapter 6, verse 40 says this. This is kind of exactly what we're talking about. He says, The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Right? So the teacher is the one with the ultimate knowledge, right? You show up in seventh grade and your teacher's up there, has, you know, and he or she is just wealth of knowledge. I mean, just, you know, just spewing it out. And you, it's like you'll never be like, like, the te- like exactly the teacher, but you know what? When you are done, right, hopefully you could take that knowledge and you can do with that knowledge what the teacher has done, which of course is to communicate that to somebody else. And so he's telling this entire group of people, like, there's a problem here. What's going on? Like, why is he, of course, even saying this? Um, and so if you jump up to verse 47, you can kind of see kind of where he's going with this. He says, as for everyone who comes to me and hears. So there has to be that moment where you're kind of intrigued, like, man, you know what? There's something more to this guy. I need to figure this out. There's something more to this situation. I need to figure out what's going on here. Um, when you invited someone to Easter, right, it was like, you know what, I... I feel like, uh, man, I need to go. Okay, I, you know, I'm going to go. And so you go and you hear. You hear those words. You hear those words of encouragement. You, you might be down and you hear something. Wait a minute, Christ can pick me up. You might listen to uh, the words and, and some of the music and it might just start ministering to your soul, right? And all of a sudden the word of the Lord comes in and just starts ringing in your soul. So there's people all the time that are ready to what? They're ready. They, they need something more. This world does not have to offer And they need something more, and so they show up. And all of a sudden, they hear this gospel. They hear the good news. They hear something that they need. It resonates with their soul. He goes on, he says this, and here's my words, and puts them into practice. I will show you what they're like. So they showed up, they heard, and they started putting into practice. And he says, you know what, there's an image that I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you what that is like. So what's the image, right? Is it, is it a tree with a bunch of, bunch of fruit? I mean, talks about that, right? That's kind of a Christian. A good Christian is like a tree that will produce good fruit, and this is true. Um, is it like a field that has a, you know, it's like ready for harvest, and you know what, that's kind of like a Christian, and, and, and you know, like there's, there's times where, yes, we see the harvest, and so that's very true. But he kind of goes in a different direction. He kind of goes into a building uh, illustration, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, this is kind of like near, and like I'm... This is one of those passages that I really resonate with. 
Um, this last week, we got some uh, cool information from one of our missionaries for our Panama mission trip. And um, we've been trying to figure out exactly where God wants us to land. You know, there's like five or six different communities that we could have gone to and just helped out. And so we just said, this is, this is the team. This is who we got coming. This is what we can do. This is who we are. And sure enough, he came back and said, oh my goodness, we got the perfect place. Perfect place. He's like, you're going to be able to go and you're going to be able to help build a church. I'm like, oh my gosh, I was like so happy, right? I'm like, you don't understand what that means. Like we were able to build a, a, a church here, right? An auditorium. And this is like dedicated to the Lord, like this geographical area, like this spot is Jesus Christ, right? Like now we get to go to another part of the planet. Now understand it's literally, I mean, like some walls, right? And like a tin roof, but you know what? They got 20 believers in this little community and they've been praying for a church. And we're like, you know what? We can come and we can help. Let's go, let's get it done. And sure enough, it's just like God, just like putting it together. And so when you look at stuff like this, where he says, you know what, this is, he's like the belief, like this situation, like this, this is kind of like a a building situation. And so he goes on here, this is in verse, um, let's see here. Um, where are we at in verse 48? Yeah, here we go. Verse 48. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck the house, but could not shake it because it was well built. Um, it was well built. So this is kind of like talking about you and me. All right, just, let's just put that out there. Let's make sure we understand this. This is talking about you and me. This is talking about you and me. And we're going to have storms and they're going to come. And some of us are just going to get blown away. And some of us are going to have trouble. And some of us, you know what, we're going to be okay. Why on earth are some okay and some are not? I love that little phrase at the very end of this verse. It says why? Because, because it was well built. Because you are well built. You know what? You lasted. You stood the test of time. Well, how, in the, how can we be well built? How, how are we able to make sure that we can stand up? Because once again, this life is going to come and it's going to, and we're going to go through it and there's going to be family members that are going to struggle and there's going to be divorce and there's going to be issues and relationship issues and there's going to be kids having problems and you know what, there's going to be job loss and there's going to be cancer and there's going to be all kinds of things in this world that are just going to beat you up and tear you down. How, how can you stand and, and face another day? How can you get out of bed and not be depressed? How can you keep moving? It all comes down to if you're well built all comes down to the foundation. You know, you look at a house, you know, and it's like, oh my goodness, I love the, the gable ends, you know, and I love all the roof lines, and you know what, I love the, the batten board, you know, siding, and you know, there's all these things that we can kind of like gig out on the colors and the, you know, the shutters that match so perfectly and the landscaping. You know what never gets any attention is the foundation, ever, right? Nobody goes, oh my goodness, look at that concrete foundation, those are poured walls, like that's so beautiful, like nobody ever. Nobody, never, ever, ever looks the foundation. You know, but may the next time you go onto a new construction site, just sit there and admire it. Let people come by like, what is he looking at? What in the world, right? Like, look at that. It's beautiful, right? So today, if we want a, a foundation, you know, what do we do? We, uh, we get an excavator out. I have a picture of an excavator. That's a big boy, right? But that'd be fun. You can, you can dig out your, your foundation real quick. So what do you do? You start digging down. Right, and you back up, right, the, the, the concrete truck. I have a picture of that next. You back that up, you pour it, and then sure enough, what? You get foundation walls, right? You get this. And then you see this, and it's amazing, but it's kind of like, ah, oh, this doesn't really translate so well to this passage. What are we talking about? I have a grainy picture, but it's a good one. It kind of shows you kind of what they dealt with way back. That was one that was dug up over in Israel. So you know how they did this? So... This is kind of crazy because the way they would do this is you would get like some sort of ancient tool, right? And you would just start digging. Has anyone ever like got some like post hole diggers out and tried to dig a hole, right? Like you're digging a hole down, right? And you're supposed to, if you're doing a deck, you know, you're supposed to go below freezing. So it's like 42 inches. You get to like 18 inches, you're like, eh, this should work, right? <laughs> you start throwing in concrete. I mean like, man, it's no fun. It's no fun. This took all day. This took all month. This took a long time. This was a family event. It was, hey, get out here with anything sharp, anything that you can to dig and help us dig. Well, how far down do we have to dig, right? How far down do we have to go? And the issue was, is you had to go until you reached something solid. Um, Here's the deal. Over in this part of the world, uh, ground was very, 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 very hard. It was very hard during the summertime. 
And so you're getting through like just compact clay. I mean, it was hard ground. And so you're doing everything you can. And you know what? You're trying to get down to rock. You're trying to get down to bedrock. And so, you know, you could be on the side of this hill and it could be exposed rock. And you don't have to go down very far at all. But you could be in a valley somewhere and it's, you know what, there's a lot more, you know, <laughs> overburden. There's a lot more ground to go through. And so you're digging and you're digging and you're digging and you're digging. Well, just keep on going. Well, how far? Until you get to something solid. Until you get to something solid. And some, of course, start digging and digging and digging. And they realize, you know what, no, this is really, man, this, this ground is hard. We should be good. Middle of summertime, man, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Of course, this is a problem if we look at verse 49. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. You ever met somebody where its destruction was complete? That's trouble, man. That is tough to watch. They had no foundation. I'm a Christian, but you know what? It doesn't seem like they really truly believe because the sign of any issue, any problem at all, man, they are just cursing God's name, right? They can't understand why bad things happen to good people. And of course, they consider themselves to be the good person, right? But scripture says that none are righteous, no, not one. If we do some digging at all, we realize, wait a minute, God doesn't have to promise anything. The only reason why he promised something is because he decided to send his son for us. So what would happen during this time? People would go, you know what, I'm going to take a little shortcut. I'm digging down, not finding bedrock. And so you know what, let's just, this should work, right? Because this ground is hard. But what happens during the winter months, it starts to rain over there. The ground turns into like a, a chocolate pudding, right? We all know what chocolate pudding is, right? That's the, what the ground literally turns into. So if this part of the world, you didn't get all the way down far enough, and you just started throwing your rock down and started building, it's going to turn into a giant mess. All of a sudden, the rains come. And it is a disaster. It's a disaster. This last week, my, uh, my family and I, we decided to take a little road trip. Uh, we went over to uh, Virginia. We went to do a little college visit. I cannot believe I'm at the age of going on a college visit, I'll be honest with you. And so it was uh, my wife, my two girls, and they brought a friend. So I was in the car full of ladies all weekend long. That was a long trip back. There it was good, right? I'll be honest, that trip back was a little bit rough. Um, it was awesome, though. It was amazing to go and just be able to see a Christian college that truly is focusing on God and just does everything right. It was great to see. But um, we were traveling down there, and uh, we were heading towards Marietta. And we heard there was, like, flooding down there. But you don't really, we don't, I, you didn't see it a ton up here. So we're going down there, and there was this one park, and I'm not kidding you, it was just completely the backstop literally was almost covered, like baseball backstop, like the fencing, like it was almost covered. And you'd see like a random structure where it shouldn't be. <laughs> you know, you're like, clearly they never thought that that area would ever flood. And so they didn't prepare for that. And sure enough, there was this stuff all over the place, random places on the way down, of course. And so like, my goodness, so we're coming back and we're thinking, you know what, it's got to be better. It's got to be better. Coming back, it may have receded a little bit, but man, it was still a complete disaster, a complete fail. Like that park, who knows, who knows when they're ever going to be able to use that park ever again. We're driving by just like, oh my goodness, that's crazy, right? Water, something simple, something easy, right? But it caused a complete failure. We look at this in our life and we say, you know what? I want to be a Christian that lasts. I want to be a Christian that makes it. I want to be a Christian that just doesn't sneak in, right? I want to be a Christian that just doesn't get inside the gates and then they close it behind me and I just barely sneak in. Like, no, I want to be a Christian that when I, when I show up, like literally like God is happy to see me. <laughs> now I understand God died for your sins as well as my sins and every single person sins. And so when we do get to heaven, there will be rejoicing. The day that you start a relationship with Jesus Christ, there was rejoicing. The angels rejoiced. It talks about that in scripture. But understand when we get to heaven, there's going to be different levels. I mean, as far as like the things that you did here on earth, right, is it, it will be shown through your reward when you get to heaven. And so I don't know if there's like rewards in the fact of trophies or gold coins or like your rewards. I think, you know, it's like it's going to be different, obviously. It's not like you're going to be taking a wheelbarrow around with all my rewards. Check me out, right? That's not going to be the case. But man, what you do here does matter. It does matter. And so if we have a proper foundation, this is, this is the key. Nobody, nobody's ever said, you know what, I want, I want complete and utter destruction. 
No, what we say is, you know what, I, I want a strong foundation, I want a strong life because you know what, my, my life was well built. Now here's the deal, we come, back, we come from different areas, we come from different situations, we come from, from different upbringings. Some, some of us in the room, man, when you were this tall, right? I mean, your parents had you in church. Just like you, you're bringing your kids, they're getting a strong foundation. This is what's going on, right, over in Neo Kids. This is what's going on in Switch. That's what's happening when you bring your students back tonight. They are getting a strong foundation. And so God bless you parents, right? When you make a decision on Sundays, you know what? I am going to make sure that we are getting up and I'm going to make sure, because you know how it is on Sunday mornings. Everything goes wrong, everything right? If you can get a bagel jammed in your toaster and it starts on fire, it's going to happen, right? It's going to happen on a Sunday morning. It won't happen on a Tuesday morning, but it'll happen on a Sunday morning, right? Like, it's Satan. It's got to be right. We blame him for everything, right? It's like, this is a fallen world for the most part, but you know, it's like, God bless you for trying to do everything you can, especially if you got young ones, to be able to get them here. Why? Because, man, you are digging and you're digging and you're digging and you're working and you're working, why? So that your kids can have this amazing, strong foundation. This is why we dedicate our children to the Lord and say, you know what, parents? You're on the hook here. <laughs> You're on the hook here. But you may have been someone that, you know, never had that. You may have been someone that never, never been able to, to, man, you grew up and either church was just so boring that it didn't, you didn't even want to connect or maybe you just went a few times here and there, but mom and dad never, never, never practiced anything that was ever preached on a Sunday morning. And so you're seeing, right, you're, you're, you're wanting to, to do what mom and dad does and you're, you're learning from them and you're realizing, wait a minute, this thing is really just a Sunday morning thing. Or maybe you just didn't even go at all. Your parents never brought you at all. It was just one of those things and now all of a sudden you're here and you're learning. And it's like, you're, you're going, oh my goodness, I have no foundation. I have no foundation. Maybe you just started a relationship with Jesus Christ last week. Man, it's time to start digging. What does that mean? It's, it's time to start working. That's what that means. Like I said, digging a foundation is one of the most difficult things in, when building a house, right? There's very little gratification when you're digging a hole. Very little gratification. When you put up the framing, you put up the walls, you're like, oh, I can see it. It's open concept. This is amazing. It's beautiful, right? Like, oh my goodness, there's a door here and there's a window here, a skylight there. Oh, you start feeling it and you start getting excited. But the digging process, man, that's not, that's not so much fun. And we have to be okay. And some of us have been in this spot where we have, we, we have started a relationship with Jesus Christ many years ago, but we've never actually got to the point of digging a foundation. That, that's a problem. That's a Christian that can go off the rails real quick. That's a Christian just waiting for something to happen in their life. And then them, what? Start cursing God's name. Are they saved? Yeah, the Holy Spirit did what he did inside of them. But you know what? They never, they never had someone come alongside of them. They never got into a church that had opportunities for them to grow in their faith. And so what do they do? Maybe they come up, they come every once in a while like, you can get some, I can give you some good teaching on Sunday mornings. I can, I can really, like, we can give you some good teaching. Like Martin, Hunter, everybody, like, we can give you some good teaching on a Sunday morning. And, but if you only come like, you know, like two or three times a year, eh, you probably forget most of it, right? Can't blame you. If you come every single week, okay, that's a good start. That's a good start. But the discipleship process, the foundation process, it's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's not. It goes beyond this experience, right? This is learning, right? You're definitely, we're digging into God's word. You're learning. So this is a discipleship environment. You're understanding who God is better, right? So this is part of it, but it cannot just end here. So if we go back, right, just a few verses, if we go back to verse 46, he kind of calls out the whole group, <laughs> Um, so he just goes into this rant, right, about, man, your foundation. Do you have it? Do you not? Uh, what's your issue? Like, is there something there? Is it strong? And he says this before this all begins. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Lord, Lord is boss. Let's be honest. Lord, Lord, like boss, boss. Like, <laughs> it's, can you imagine if you're praying over lunch and you're sitting there and, and the kids are around, and everybody's around and you're about ready to pray for lunch. Lord, thank you. And Jesus shows up. He's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Like, hold on. Why are you calling me Lord? Right? You're calling me, you're saying that I'm the boss, but then you're not doing, you're not doing what I say. Like, this is a problem, right? This shows our foundation. This shows if we take it serious. 
Because there's some people that do, they go through all the steps and they, they get all the knowledge and they get the understanding and they go through every, all the training, they do everything that they need to do to have a firm foundation, but they just never apply it to their heart. And that's a whole nother deal. That's a whole nother deal. I, I find that very hard to believe and very hard to understand. I'll be honest with you, that someone has truly started a relationship with Jesus Christ and they've been, they understand the things of scripture and then nothing is produced. To me, I sit there and go, my goodness, is, is salvation really took root? You know, you, you look at the parables and you see like Jesus talking about different parables and different types of ground and there's hard ground and rocky ground and soft ground and fertile ground. Like it's almost like salvation just got onto that ground. It looked like it took root and then the thorns just, you know, just kind of, you know, sucked it, sucked life right out of it. My goodness. Where are we at? Where are we at with this? Why are you call me Lord, Lord? <laughs> it's like you look, at, you look at the teachings of Christ and what could he be referring to? Because Christ said some pretty crazy stuff, let's be honest. It's easy to start a relationship with Jesus Christ, right? We say, you know what, just, man, just talk to the Lord, mean it. But then we actually follow what he says. It gets a little more difficult because he said stuff like, you know what, man, um, pray for your enemies. Forgive those, right? Forgive your enemies. Like, not just the people that do bad things because that's difficult enough. I watch the news. I see horrible things take place. Makes me angry, Right? Man, it's hard enough to forgive those people, but when you have somebody that you work with and they did something to you personally, and they hurt you or your family, they took funds out of your bank account, right, because they stole whatever it might be, oh, man, you're telling me I got to forgive them? <laughs> well, we're training, right? We, go, we, we train. What did Jesus do? He was on the cross. People coming up and yelling, spitting on him, yelling, screaming at him. He went back to his hometown and literally had to like, like sneak out. Like he had to do something supernatural because the people there got so angry at him. <laughs> but yet he died on a cross for them as well. So when, when we, we hear stuff like, you know what, man, love your enemies. When we hear stuff like reconcile fractured relationships, these are, this is not easy because the world would say, you know what, they disrespected you, forget them. Right? Write them off. Be done with them all together. Now, toxic relationships, it's a different thing. We've talked about this, right? Those that are not in the right place with their, you know, like just, there's a number of things, right, that you got to be careful of. If somebody's really dragging you down, somebody's really pulling you into a place you should not be in, you have to draw those lines. But if it's a, if it's a friendship or a relationship, a family relationship, and there was this weird thing, because you know how it can happen? One stupid comment is made, and it can turn into a decade of not talking. It can turn into a decade of, of like one going, so, so why are you upset at them? I don't know. Go to the other one. Why are you upset? At them? I don't know. It was this weird situation. We just kind of stopped talking. It can turn into that when Jesus is like, he's wanting us to, to mend these fractured relationships. I mean, this is not an easy thing, because especially, I mean, I got some, like, I got disrespected in the situation, so they need to be the first one. What if Jesus is saying, you know what, I know that they disrespected you and they did all these things, but I'm going to call you to be the bigger person. I'm going to call you to be the disciple and use that foundation that you have. This is what I need you to do. Well, this gets a little more difficult. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Why, why would you accept salvation and know what I did for you on a cross and not go through with some of these things? Well, because they're hard, right? They're not easy. And I got habits, right? I got habits. I do things, so it's difficult for me to do other stuff. And so I'm just kind of stuck in a rut, and this is just kind of what I do. And Jesus is like, I need you to get out of those habits. I need you to get away from those things that you're used to doing, and I need you to do the things that I want you to do. We see Jesus Christ all the time going away and praying. Man, what's our prayer life like? What's our prayer life? Like, do we, do we take the time and, and, and go to the Lord? We see it during the, during the Holy Week, right? We like celebrate the Holy Week and Jesus during the Holy Week a number of times is able to just get away and just pray to be with, to be with his Father. Well, that's gonna take me rearranging my whole morning. <laughs> that's gonna take me waking up even earlier and I'm not a morning person. Oh man, it's hard, right? You're digging, you're digging, you're digging. It's hard. It's not easy. It's not easy. Nobody gets to see you, right? At 5 a.m. praying into the Lord. It's kind of like that foundation, right? Nobody's looking at that foundation saying, man, that's, that's pretty, right? 
Nobody's saying that, but what happens? When that house is strong, when that house is standing, when that storm comes and it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't shake, it doesn't move, it doesn't wash down the hill, right? It doesn't float away. Like, then they're going, oh my goodness, that's awesome, right? <laughs> that's amazing. That's a person that, man, they, they create shelter for other people. They create stability for other people because their foundation is so strong. You ever go through something, you're like, man, I just need to talk to, and you got that person, right? <laughs> Why do you need to talk to that person? Because they have a strong foundation. Because they went through some stuff and they got through some stuff, right? Because they opened up and they shared and they said, you know what, man, I'm going through this and this and this, but you know what? God's good. God's good. I love him. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? I mean, you think about our relationships that we have. You think about our relationship to the stuff that we own. We think about, you know, how we treat money. There's, there's so many things that Jesus Christ talks about and says, but this group of people, what? There were, there were two types there. There were some that heard what he had to say and went, you know what, that makes a ton of sense. You know what, I need to figure this out. And there were some there that day that were like, you know what? Oh, that was nice. I wonder what he was talking about. Ah, let's just go get some food, right? There were some there that literally that day decided, you know what, that was cool. That was a nice little speech he gave. Man, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm a little hungry too right now, but you know what? Like, I mean, this is, it was, it just kind of bounced off of them. The training did not take root. The training did not happen. The training did not help. And so when you look at it, man, you think it through. If we are to be trained by Jesus Christ, what does our life look like? There's two things that I really truly believe stick out. And this is my hope is that we can kind of jump on this and kind of, man, at least take this further in our own personal life. There's two things. If we're gonna follow Jesus around, right, table to table, right, and learn what he does, right, and go to the next table, you know, right, and like go back and learn, learn what he does, we should start acting like Jesus. We should start talking like Jesus. We should start, you know, doing things. We start thinking like Jesus. Our hearts should start breaking for the things that broke Jesus' heart. Um, but there's two things I think we can, we can settle on, right? There's two things that I think, you know, would really help us. And one is just his humility. The humility of Jesus Christ. When he was on the cross, right? He could have called down, I mean, Satan even told him, hey, you, you can go ahead and call down legions of angels, go ahead and take care of this. And he's like, no, I'm not. When he's on the cross, he did not have to go through the cross. Like the father was, you know, this is my will for you. This is the perfect will for you that you take on the sins of the world. Like, oh man, he did not want to do this in his humanity. He's going, I do not want to be forsaken by the father. In his humility, he went to the cross. One of the most humbling things ever. We get to a spot in life, right, where we like the finer things in life and we like the things that, you know, make us feel good and the things that prop us up and the people, we put people around us that just say good stuff to us. Why? Because it's like our, our ego needs to be fed. And what if we're, we're following Jesus around and he's being humble and he's washing feet? The ultimate servant. The ultimate servant. That's not very popular, right? That doesn't sell a lot of books. That doesn't, you know, like... If we're going to learn anything by chasing Jesus around from table to table and figuring it out, like if we're going to be the trainee and we're going to try to, you know, understand who he is, it comes down to humility and service to other people. This is what Jesus was all about when he was here. And I'm telling you, when people go through difficulty and you're willing to serve them, oh my goodness, that's a strong, that starts with a, that's a strong foundation. There's something going on there. Something took root Right? Somebody paid attention. Somebody decided to start looking. Somebody tried to start understanding. So in any situation where there's a trainee, trainer, you know, like there has to be a moment where they finally graduate, right? Like there has to be this moment where there's a graduation that comes. And um, so a lot of you have gone through a graduation with your son or daughter, maybe your, grand, your grandkids, maybe you know, hopefully you all graduated if you're older or something, right? Um, but there's got to be that moment where we, we walk across that stage. There has to be that moment where we can say, okay, you know what? I've gone through the training. Now I get to do, I'm not greater than the one that trained me, but I get to do what the trainer did. Right? Now is the time. This is what Jesus was saying to this group of people. There has to be a time where you finally graduate. There's got to be a time where you say, you know what? I get to do what he did. Well, what did he do? He went around and told people about the goodness of Jesus Christ, about himself, what he was going to do. He served people, right? He was humble. So there's got to be a moment in time where we can finally say, you know what? Okay, all right. Uh, the foundation is built. 
How do we get a foundation? Yes, come on Sunday morning for sure. Small groups, 100%, right? That's it. discipleship groups, even better. We'll get into that a little bit later in the series, but like discipleship groups, trying to figure out like different people you can pour into. And so when you finally get to that spot, there's gotta be a moment where you step out and say, okay, you know what? I am going to do now everything I can to start acting like the person that trained me. Why? Because I have a strong foundation and I can get out and I'm good on my own. I can do this. But obviously we have to constantly go back and get a little more retraining here and there, right? You gotta go back and get in God's word, but you gotta go out, right? You gotta go out. And so my hope, of course, is that we can get to that spot. And so here's the, here's the moment in time. This is the moment in time where they, they graduated. I think you know where I'm probably going with this. this is Matthew 28, 16. Uh, this is when Jesus, of course, came back. He died. He uh, went and showed up to like for 40 days, right? He showed up different people. And then finally he was on the Mount of Olives. And this is the moment in time where he's basically taking out the, the sword, right? And he's knighting every one of them saying, okay, we've been through a lot together, guys, <laughs> right? I've done all I can, man. I spent my time here healing people and doing some cool stuff and ministering and speaking. But man, I spent a lot of time making sure that each one of you knew what you needed to do. Why? Because now he was what? Passing it on to the next generation. And if you read the book of Acts, it's over the top. So here's, the, here's his message. This is what he has to say. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him. Some doubted. It's amazing that some still even doubted then. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's like, go, man, like do it. Get out there. I need you to go. I need you to do This is why missions is such an important thing to our church because of this. Like literally Panama is like, like the story behind the missionaries that we are connected with in Panama is amazing. The story, is, it's, the story is, is a man that basically said, you know what, I want to go to the ends of the earth. Where is that? Where's the people group that don't know Jesus? Where's the people group that haven't heard? And so this man, he found three or four different you know, places, and one was in Panama. And this guy said, you know what, there's a little spring right here. You follow this spring, and you keep on going down this spring. It's going to get bigger and bigger, and it does get bigger. <laughs> and it turns into this giant river. And you know what, there's going to be people down there. People that have been here for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, and they've never heard about Jesus Christ. We showed up last year. People were looking at us like we were like from outer space, right? They're like looking at us like, what is going on? Great commission. It's going out, right? It's going out. But what if it's such an easy thing where it's just like going to your neighbor's house, right? It's just going to someone that God has already put in your way, in your, in your space. We moved into our house a little over a year ago, and... Um, I'll be honest with you, like I've met most of my neighbors, but there was one I just have not, I did not get to meet. And, you know, I could tell, uh, like, he likes to talk. So, you know, I got to have like 30 minutes because everyone I see, man, he'll like stop them on the side. People will be walking down the road and he'll stop them and they'll talk. And I'm like, all right, I got to block a time, right? Like 30 minutes to go say hello, which is really, really sad. Um, and so the other day I was, you know, doing some different stuff in the yard, just kind of like trying to figure out some stuff. And I saw him out. I'm like, okay, I got some time. I got some time. I got some time. Let's go. Let's do this. And so sure enough, I was able to go and have a good conversation with him. I didn't tell him I'm a pastor yet, so he has no idea on that. So that's kind of fun, right? So see how many F-bombs people drop while I'm talking to them and then, <laughs> and then tell them I'm a pastor and then it just clears up, right? It's kind of nice. It's kind of funny how that happens. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how that, I'll keep you informed on how that goes. <laughs> I'll let you know if he comes. Um, but, you know, it's like just being able to meet people that are in our space, that are around us, just that God said, you know what, I just need you to go, right? I need you to go and I need you to use that foundation that you have. So where are you at today? Right? Where's, your, is, where's your foundation at? Right? Is, it, is it just, is, is it there at all? Right? Have, has there ever been a moment in time where you started a relationship with Jesus Christ? Because that's where it starts. That's kind of like the decision point. I'm going to start building, right? I'm going to start building. And so you make that decision and all of a sudden, what? I got to get a little bit of foundation. I got to get into a small group. I got to make sure I get some people around me. I got to come on Sunday mornings. I got to listen to some teaching during the week. I got to get into God's word myself. Right? You got to open up God's word you got to listen to it. you got to soak it up, right? You have to understand it. 
Every single one of us is in a different spot. Each one of us has a different foundation and how that foundation got built. Some of us had parents that really poured into us. Some had nobody that poured into us. And it's, man, you are a self-made Christian, right? Like, obviously, it's Jesus. But you know what I'm saying, right? Like, man, you had to work and work and work. And nobody was force-feeding you at all. It was all because you decided, you know what? I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn. And I'm going to understand. And slowly by slowly, right, you get to that spot where now you transition from what? Being the, the person getting trained to what? Getting out and being on your own and looking around and going, you know what? There's some other people that I can train. That's, that's discipleship. That's beautiful. Last verse, the Great Commission is this, Matthew 28, 20. says this, and teaching them, this was, he goes on to verse 19 one more time. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Everything. That's a big word, right? Man. And teaching them to obey everything. I have everything. So this last week, like I mentioned, we went to this college. It was Liberty University over in Virginia. And um, you know when the parents, you know when they get the parents there, they, they pull out all the stops, right? And uh, so a bunch of parents, they had convocations like chapels, like a church service. And so we're all there and, you know, it was an amazing worship. It was, oh man, it was over the top. I couldn't imagine going to that every day. That'd be incredible. But uh, they brought out... Um, speaker, uh, Tony Dungy showed up, right? Um, he's an NFL um, coach. He uh, went to the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl. He's an analyst now and does a lot of different things with the NFL. And um, he was speaking and it was, uh, it was cool. I'm like, man, there's no way. That's like, it was cool to see him. I'll be honest with you. And so he has a very, very rich testimony. It's amazing. And uh, he said he was raised properly. It was like a lot of what we're talking about, like he was raised properly, like his, he's like, my father always told me, my father always told me, my father always told me, like, man, I'd like to meet his father, right? <laughs> like his father raised him properly. And so he would go into all these different things and just in, within, you know, just trying to get his first job in the NFL. And he was, he was going, he was like, he had four or five different interviews and, you know, he, he, he was being himself in every single one and every single one, he ended up not getting the job. And so we started getting a lot of, uh, people saying, hey, well, you know what? You really need, you shouldn't wear that cross pin, right? You shouldn't, you shouldn't speak about your family so much. You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't talk about certain things. You, you, you really need to sell. You need to sell like the things that they want to hear. And he's, so he said he ended up, you know, going in a job interview down with the uh, Tampa, Tampa Bay um, uh, Buccaneers, I think they're called, right? Um, and so he ended up uh, realizing that the owners of uh, this team were Jewish. And so he's like, man, do I take the cross off? Do I take it off? He decided, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to talk about Jesus as much as I can. I'm going to tell him how much family is important to me. He ended up getting the job. <laughs> I was like, that's so awesome. His whole point was, and that's the whole point of this, you think this through, like, his whole point was you have to, you literally have to be a disciple 100% of the time. Everywhere you go, everywhere, everything you do, the Great Commission, right? Everything, obey everything I have commanded you, everything that you see in my word, everything that I gave to you, right? That group of people sitting there that day, like, you call me Lord, but you don't do what, you don't do what I ask you to do. Oh, what time is it? Let's just go, okay. All right, like, good talk, Jesus, okay, right? You call me Lord, but then you call me boss. You say you're the one in charge, but then you don't do what I say. There's something, there's, there's a problem. Thinking about being Christ-centered every single where we go, every single place we go, every single situation. That is not easy. It's easy to be go on a mission trip, right? You go on a mission trip, like, okay, these seven days, we're acting like Jesus, right? <laughs> you get home, you go to work the next day, and you're yelling and screaming and swearing the person out on the phone, right? I mean, oh, like every single place, everywhere you go, where does that go back to? It goes back to your foundation. So, man, what do you have to do? Do you need to get in God's word more, right? Do you need to start learning like more about scripture? Do you have some questions that are just like eating at your soul that you need answered? You know, what is it for you? I encourage you. I encourage you through this series to keep coming back, but I encourage you to figure that out, that next step for you. What is gonna make your foundation stronger so that you can step out with more boldness, so that you can do everything that is taught, right, according to what Jesus Christ said. Let's bow our heads.
God, we uh, come before you and I thank you so much for your word. Lord, help us as we are constantly working on our foundations, as we're constantly doing the things that uh, are making us to be a, a stronger, I guess, better Christian, Lord. But Lord, we know why we are a Christian is because of what you did for us on the cross, Lord. And it comes down to that moment in time where we've given our hearts and our lives to you. And Lord, what a blessing it is to know that so many in this room have done that. And people last week were able to do that. But Lord, I just uh, can't help but think there might be someone here today that has never given their life to you. So Lord, I just pray, I lift them up this morning that they would just, uh, their heart would be a little more sensitive today than it has been. Lord, that you would soften them up, Lord, that they would just be willing to take that step and say, you know what, I trust in you. I'm a sinner and I need your grace. I'm messed up and I need salvation. Lord, may those beautiful words be spoken today, Lord. Lord, a prayer of salvation is incredible, Lord, but we know what comes next is difficult because you say in your word to do all the things that I have said. So Lord, my hope is that those that have given their life to you that have a foundation, Lord, that they would take that step and they would start looking around, Lord, that they would be a shelter to other people, Lord, that they would draw people in, that they would pull them in. Lord, that we would meet our neighbors, that we would have the conversation that worked, that we would extend a conversation to someone that we do not know that we would just smile for no reason, but simply because you've died on a cross for us, Lord. So Lord, help us this week, help us this month to shore up our foundation, to understand you better, to understand your grace, Lord. So that when people call us a Christian, Lord, it means something, it has, has some weight to it, Lord. Lord, help us to be believers that nonstop, Lord. Everything we do, everywhere we go, Lord, we are your disciple 24 seven. Lord, we love you so much. I pray these things in your name. Let's stand and worship him one more time. Yeah. 
Uh, that's our hope, of course, for you this week, this next month, uh, through this series that we, every single day, we become more like Jesus. Um, the journey's never over. Ideas that have a strong foundation so that we can go out and be a great representation of Him. Whether we're here on the mission field, wherever we might be, uh, may this week you be more like Jesus Christ. Um, the prayer team, when I pray, after I get done praying, is going to come. And I encourage you, man, if God's putting something on your heart, man, take, take a few moments and uh, take it to the Lord. Right? If you are trying to understand salvation better, man, this is a great time, right? At the end of the service, everybody's out. You're able to talk through it, able just to talk with God about that. God, we love you so much. What a blessing it is, Lord, just to be able to get together and worship you, Lord. Our prayer is that we can become more like you every single day, Lord. Um, 
we thank you for the foundation that you've given us that we can live so strong and know that, man, we can go out and we can be okay. And there's people in our lives that have just an amazing foundation, Lord. And what a blessing that is to be able to be by them, be with them, Lord. May we look around. May we figure out who we can be there for, Lord. May we can start figuring this out. May our foundation become stronger this week, Lord. May we do things that honor and praise you. We love you, Jesus, so much. We pray these things. All God's people said, amen. Thanks for coming today.